Well, they've been working on it for a long time. Um, under the previous government, relations between South Korea and Japan deteriorated significantly. Um, it was mostly 2019 when that all began, and it was in relation to this issue. So Japan is always going to be an important partner for South Korea. They're both U.S. allies. Um, they're always under pressure from the U.S. to get along, and these historical problems come up between them a lot. In terms of why now, I think the, the new administration in South Korea, relatively new, the, the Yoon administration, has has made a big push. Um, this this deal with Japan is really a lot more favourable to Japan than South Korea, and I think it really reflects the current South Korean president's concerns about North Korea security concerns, and his desperation um, to find allies or you know uh, security partners to work with. And Japan is obviously a key one. Also, he has a new Indo-Pacific strategy, and I think he sees Japan as essential to helping to bring that strategy to fruition. Yeah, so it's a very pragmatic decision at, at many right. levels. Japan, of course, has always argued that the matter had already been resolved in 1965 treaty. What it, was it in your view, or did, do you think they should still have come to the party with compensation? Yeah, it, it's such a tricky issue. There's, there's sort of no simple answer, but I think what happened is Japan did solve this issue with South Korea in 1965, but at the time South Korea was under an authoritarian regime. It was a dictatorship and in fact many people, even citizens in Japan, opposed that settlement knowing they were making the deal with a dictator um, who even mobilised martial law as a way to suppress domestic um, opposition to that, um, to that settlement. And the forced labourers at the time weren't consulted, they didn't have any any say in that and South Korean government did receive money from Japan that was expressly intended for the forced laborers but much of it didn't go to the forced laborers it went into industries because South Korea was obviously a worn torn country being under colonialism had the Korean War so it, it's complicated yeah how will this compensation fund actually work now well, basically, it's a formula we've seen over and over again between Japan and South Korea as these issues have come up. It's not just the forced labor, it's also the former um, so-called comfort women. Um, that um, The Japanese government has done everything in its power to avoid paying money direct from its government coffers to individual victims. Um, and it's concerned that if it did such a thing, it would be setting a legal precedent that could then be mobilized by all other colonial victims um, in the region. And so what the Japanese government has done is always tried to look for alternatives. So it's done the same with this fund, rather than giving money to the victims as they desire, it's the South Korean government has sent up a, a set up a fund and it's welcomed donations by the Japanese corporations that use Korean forced labor. It's also asked um, Korean um, companies that benefited from those funds that were intended for um, forced laborers to donate money into that and also called on wider donations. Okay. So that money could go to the victims. So, yeah. But it could take some time to realize just how much will flow into those funds. Do you expect those Japanese companies to contribute, companies like Mitsubishi and, other, and others? I would be surprised if they did, um, given that, you know, the, the court, South Korean domestic courts demanded that they do that years ago and they still ha have been reluctant to do that. So I would be surprised if they did it now. I mean, they may seem see this current formula of the fund as, as being a way to avoid setting a legal precedent that might upset the Japanese government, but I, I'd be surprised if they did. Yeah. There's a lot of anger in South Korea. There are protests on the streets. Do you think that's going to die down? Will the president be able to explain his reasoning um, uh, for going down this path? No, I, I don't think he will be able to appease those um, domestic constituencies that are, are really upset about this, or the victims themselves. I think it it could be, you know, that his his party will lose the next election um, because of this. Obviously, colonial matters are really at the heart of um, Korean society, particularly the comfort women issue. But this issue of forced labor has gained more sort of resonance and, and traction among um, Korean citizens in the last few years and their battle for redress. 
So, yeah, I don't think he'll be able to work his way out of this one. Yeah. So, you know, given this pragmatic decision around relations with Japan, how might that blossom now, given th this deal has been done? How might they strengthen relations? And, you know, I, the US has been very keen to see this happen too. Right, yeah, the US is always urging Japan and South Korea um, to, to work through their history problems. I think it's not going to be an instant panacea um, for the relationship. I think there's been a lot of um, damage done to the diplomatic relationship in the last few years as they kind of deal with these matters of the past that have really come up to, to bite both of them, having signed the treaty as they did under those circumstances. And I think, I mean, South Korean government under the new administration has been making a lot of overtures. Japan has sort of been very lukewarm in its reaction to that. Obviously, it's going to view this uh, in a very positive light, this, this latest deal. And I think it will help to... It will help to drive the relationship forward, but I think it will it will still improve incrementally. They they were still working together on security cooperation with the US, but it may gain more traction now. They may do more exercises together.